Good morning. My name is Abby Dunn. I am founder of hospitality consultancy 68 People. I am delighted to be hosting a series of interviews as part of the online version of Propel's People and Training Conference. I'll be speaking to people leads from some of my favourite operators, um, talking to them about how they've overcome the challenges that we face since March uh, and also what our future looks like in terms of people. Um, so without further ado, I would like to welcome this morning's guest. Um, she is a lady who I uh, saw being interviewed on uh, a panel and needed to hear more about what she was saying um, <laughs> from a company who were totally leading the way in terms of employee experience. So please welcome Chantal Wilson from Honest Burgers. Good morning. Oh, good morning. Thank you for that lovely introduction. You always, now everything's recorded. You do a panel and it's here forever. So you have to, uh, yeah, thank you for saying it's good. That makes me feel much better. <laughs> yeah, it was really good. It was really good. How are you doing this morning? I'm very good. Uh, you know, it's cold in the countryside. So I'm um, staying warm, sitting in front of a fire right now. Um, and yeah, four months pregnant. So getting used to uh, being amazing. both a people director, thank you, and um, yeah, people director while pregnant. It's just, yeah, different, uh, different world. So surviving prefer professionally and personally really well. Amazing. And where in the world are you dialing in from? Where are you based? A little village called Bentley, just um, outside of Farnham in Hampshire which has pretty terrible internet. So I apologize <laughs> for any interruptions, people, uh, because I'm quite remote, but I do get this lovely view. It looks amazing, uh, yeah. <laughs> this is the only room in the house that has it. So don't think it's anything grander than just this. And it's, um, it's about three degrees in this house. So it's, uh, it comes with its challenges. <laughs> Well, brilliant. Let's, I mean, first of all, for anybody who might not know, um, you know, uh, about Honest, tell us a little bit about how you would describe them. So, uh, yeah, we're a bunch of misfits here at Honest. <laughs> I say that with absolute love. Uh, we were started by three um, founders, Dory and Tom and Phil, who are still really active in the business. Um, you know, Tom and Phil went live uh, yesterday to 300 employees on Workplace, which is our engagement platform. So very much in the business, still the heart and soul and DNA of what we do. We obviously sell burgers, really mm -hmm. yummy burgers. Amazing um, burgers. Yeah. And we've, <laughs> we've got a footprint across the country, mostly London, but we are um, across uh, you know, the Northern cities and, and expanding. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, about 40 sites. I say about 40 sites because Welcome to COVID. It changes every day, yeah. and we're still very much opening sites. So, yeah, the number um, is evolving, but forty, and we're about one hundred and ten staff members. Um, so, yeah, we um, that's us. Amazing, and um, just specifically about your people team. Um, you know, what, what does that look like? So, I have ten people in the people team. Mm -hmm. um, we I also look after the innovation and tech project management team so there's a team of six in there as well so like the groups within people and friends as we call them uh, yeah. is about six is about 16 and um, yeah we're not structured the, in the traditional way so um, we very much have a learning architecture team that works on tech innovation for learning yeah. that's quite user focused so we don't have a a general um, big L and D team that's out building and delivering content. So we do really rely on tech, and then we also have a great brand, a people brand team that work on um, you know everything from our engagement platform to attraction um, and different initiatives in the business. And then we've got good old BAU people experience. How do we keep it all working every day and humans happy and paid and all that jazz? So we're structured slightly different. But yeah. for us, it, it really works. And it, it, it is quite unique to have a people director looking after tech and innovation, isn't it? I mean, it, that's something that is you know, probably not, not very common at all. No, I, I smile because I absolutely love it. Like, I think we should. I think more yeah. people directors should. You know, for years, 
you'd be brought into a, a tech project usually at launch phase because mm -hmm. as a people team you need to train it or be looking at how that could actually go to the frontline users mm -hmm. and so often you'd be like why do we decide this or why does it say that or why does it look like that mm -hmm. and you know honest is a place with great opportunities and i asked and i said hey i think there's a way to architecture your tech systems in a way that's got the user first so let's work mm -hmm. backwards let's go user first so what's our gms need what's our frontline staff members need and then figure out how it works for finance and people and investors and banking so it's a different approach for us we've been doing it for six months now and we're really proud of it I'm super proud of it and i'm super proud of my, the people team who you know were told they needed to learn how to use automated bots and instead of moaning they all went okay how do i how do i do that and yeah. um so we're quite tech friendly people team and our project team that works beside us is fantastic um operators who who believe in what i do that it has to work for the frontline user or there's just no point and so i mean i i imagine that has been really key in in how you've overcome some of the challenges that we faced since since march so so, I mean, talk, talk us through how, how it has played a role um, since, since March. Yeah, I mean, I think um, I'd love to say it was a stroke of genius that 18 months ago we started on this tech journey and, you know, we dismantled a traditional L&D team, brought in learning architect, had a development consultant. So I'd love to say it's because I knew we were going to absolutely need it. <laughs> I didn't, but I knew that you know 23 year olds or to 25 year olds coming into the business expected different stuff from us like mm -hmm. they don't want to read a guide they want a search bar and they want to be able to dissect the information like youtube in two in a, in a half minutes like that's yeah. it you're not getting a three-hour course with loads of engagement so for me we, we were on that journey and we were actually just launching a program called Honest College, which is like accessible learning at any time, right when COVID hit. So for us, we just repurposed that to being like the best comms platform we could have imagined because we were able to say, well, this is what furlough is. And you know, everyone, this is what's changing every two, two minutes. But it's not just a tick box communication tool. It's not like, oh, by the way, Abby, like you're on furlough now. It says it goes beyond that. It says you're on furlough now. This is what it means for you. Here's your paycheck for the next six months. Here's what it means for you in terms of your pension and your holiday. So we were able to customize like real time data for the individual. And that just took away all the anxiety from people not knowing what was going on it took away a load of admin frankly yeah, yeah. from the people team so i you know big kudos to people teams out there that don't have it because we didn't go through the world of letters or chasing or any of that because we have this automated system you know 450 people accepted their furlough letter in like three minutes like like that is unheard yeah. of like i said yeah. it's been tough and i think i've got it really easy considering yeah. Yeah. what i know friends of mine are having to to do to chase confirmation letters so you know and the in terms biggest of what it is that you you know for for those of people that might not understand exactly what it looks like what what is it you know what is it that you've managed to pull all together and and how have you done it yeah, I was just about to say that. So good question, because I'm thinking I'm talking because I know it intimately, like the automated bots are like our friends, like we have six of them <laughs> and, and they are like, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry, good, great question. Um, so <laughs> a couple of key platforms. So we use Workplace by Facebook mm -hmm. for our engagement um, tool. And it's not a people people engagement tool thing that sits on the side that you hope people log into once a month. Yeah. You know, our current stat is 96% of our people log on to that platform every week. Wow. So I know every seven days, almost 100% of our employees are going to log into it. I think our daily rate is well over 80. So yeah. we're, it's the center of our business. So we don't have That's emails. Amazing, isn't it? Wow. Mm. It's fantastic. And I think if, 
for me, it was the merging of it. It wasn't a people thing. It was an everyone thing. So mm -hmm. everything goes through this, this um, platform and it's fantastic. Big advocate. So we have workplace that comes with chat, just like good old Facebook comes with chat. Um, that's what we use instead of email. And then there's some really awesome tech partners that integrate with chat. So the one being the bot platform who are a really cool bunch of people that allow you to basically build stuff on the go. So it's so easy that we can build it. And I'm sure everyone, people listening would know the pain of wanting to get something done, having to go to a supplier, telling you it's gonna be three months development time, then getting it back. Like we're doing it like every 10, 15 minutes. So the speed of adaptability is crucial. And then there's some really exciting stuff that sits behind that. Google Sheets, Integromat, loads of other very techy stuff that I don't know um, <laughs> that allows us to integrate, you know, almost all of our systems. So yeah, it sounds like a very scary kind of tech stack, but for someone who's not a tech background, actually it's just driven by what is my, what is the person need in the front line? And they just needed real information that yeah. meant something to them. So then we had to just start building. Okay, well, what does that mean afterwards? I definitely <laughs> said someone was going to come upstairs. <laughs> Perfect. So that's what we used to these days. Um, and just for anybody kind of listening to this thinking about how on earth do you start a journey like this? You know, what, what, where do you start? I think my biggest advice is just take a step. Just take a step. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for us, we're, you know, we're very open like i'd share any platform that we have there's loads of case studies that you can you can work from but you just have to start in motion and for me without an engagement platform that truly engages your people you're kind of on quicksand so there's no point in building anything fantastic if your people actually aren't on the platform so start with your engagement space make it integral to multiple parts of your business not just people and and then grow from there that would be my best tip and how has it um, you know in terms of the cold hard stats of how it's actually influenced staff turnover management turnover you know what, what results have you seen there well we went into covid with a 50 percent reduction in turnover wow. so we were again we were going in on a high. We had done a load of work. We had addressed a lot of, you know, stuff we were doing wrong, frankly. We're not perfect. And when you grow from being a small founder business to multi-site to like loads of sites, mm -hmm. you're going to get some things wrong. So we spent 18 months taking away things that had just been plugged in, I guess I would say. Like, you know, as you grow, you're like, oh, we need this and we need that and we need that. And then all of a sudden, your people aren't happy because it doesn't feel right. So you know, my team slogged through that with our operational partners to figure out what was what was wrong. So we went into COVID 50% down on turnover. Very proud of that. Yeah, and uh, and kind of what we found is we, we were going to hold our nerve. That was our decision from day one on COVID. You know, we were going to hold our nerve and not let the pressures of what it could be really bad or we don't know what's going to happen or how much money are you going to make delivery only? I don't know. We're a restaurant business. Like, you know, yeah. all of that kind of anxiousness. We, we were always going to hold our nerve on people that we weren't going to knee jerk and use a legal framework like redundancies to make us feel better. And I, and I, and I don't, I know companies had to do that. And, yeah. and this isn't a, this isn't a slide. A, 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 um, I'm not trying to tell people off for doing yeah. that. But I will openly caution that there is another way. And mm -hmm. that's what we did. We did the other way, which was talk to your people. I mean, Brexit came early. We knew people were leaving from Brexit. And now all of a sudden furlough gave people the opportunity to say, I don't want to work in London anymore. I'm going to go back to my home country. So we lost 200 people in our headcount purely by having a load of conversations just to ask people yeah. what's right for you. Yeah. Um, so I'm really proud of that. I think it, I mean, it a sounds so kind of, of work. simple. <laughs> you know, you make it sound so simple, but this is, you know, I, I can talk from experience. This isn't not what's happening everywhere. Um, just you know, it, 
obviously you've been supported by the founders in terms of putting in some of this, um, you know, kind of really forward thinking stuff. You know, what, what advice would you give to people who maybe, you know, who, whose founders or whose board maybe is not as technologically minded? Technologically? Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> um, I think it's, I think the first relationships with your operator, mm -hmm. you know, Brian Gillen is our ops director. I've been with him for many, many years. We have a, a, a relationship that's built on respect for each other's disciplines and specialities. So I'm, a, I'm very fortunate to have an ops director that not only think, thinks of me as an equal, but we show up as equal partners to solve problems. And yeah. for me, that's the, the basis of even when a founder is like, I don't really know if this is right. You know, when you're coming in as two big people in ops, which is like the creme de la creme of your business is in like the day to day, mm -hmm. that, that has a big influence. So I think if you're doing it alone, get an ally, like is my first yeah, feedback. Yeah. Um, I think your operational ally is your best ally um, in terms of influence. And, you know, the other thing is, is I'm, I don't pretend to be a coder. I don't pretend to be, you know, uh, anything to do with technology, truly. But what I do know is human beings and how, you know, when it doesn't work is because they're not motivated or inspired or it just doesn't work for them. So I, we then use great people externally to plug those gaps. So I think it's being humble and honest about, there's a lot on tech, I have no idea. But then I speak confidently about the stuff I am quite passionate about. So yeah, be, be humble and be okay to, to, have a, to have a weakness that it doesn't matter. I think if you're trying to blag it, your board will see through you. <laughs> um, <laughs> and you mentioned um, kind of L&D and, and some of the things that you've put in. I mean, what does that look like for, for Honest, whether that's now or you know, in, in the future? You know, what does, what does L&D look like? Oh, I, I mean, I think, I think L and D and recruitment, like traditional L and D and recruitment, yeah. are in the most exciting time. They're changing, they're adapting, it's morphing, and I think you can be scared of that and and hold on to old, old ways, or, or you can really just embrace it. And I'm super proud of my team that have really just embraced embraced it to go you know, yes, I know that people are asking you for courses and they're asking you for a career path. They're asking you for a booklet. <laughs> is that impactful? Like, is it helping them? Because if it's not helping them, then let's spend our energy help, you know, helping them see a different way, you know? So when we launched Honest College, um, you know, which is kind of online learning, but we did it through our workplace, which means it was searchable. And it was like one in the morning, people were searching like, how do I effectively communicate? So all of a sudden, all those like little spider senses you have that people are not gonna do it in the traditional way anymore. Yeah. It kind of proved it for us. We saw the stats of when people wanted to learn and when they wanted to have accessible things to them. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think the future, I don't know. I think it's a lot more tech-based. Yeah. I I don't see the human connection going, by the way. I don't think you can ever replace that. Yeah. But I think we, we're getting to a point where if you're going to do it in person, it's just so much richer now because yeah. all the, the all the stuff that would get in the way, you can do that online now. So when you're in person, you can have way more meaningful connection. So I guess we see it as an exciting time. We see tech as a real enabler, not a detractor. Yeah. And for me, if you marry it with human connection, bingo, that's what we're gonna to try to do. And you touched on recruitment there. What, you know, what is, you know, again, same question. What is, you know, what does that look like? And what, what do you think now feels really kind of traditional and cumbersome? Oh. I mean, recruitment's been on such a journey and I'm talking to, you know, an absolute expert. So, um, you know, feeling nervous. But, you know, we have, I have a head of, um, you know, employer brand, all the, you know, and for me, he's doing some great stuff. So we can talk about how great we are, but I just think that doesn't fly with candidates anymore. It doesn't fly with, passive candidates doesn't fly with active candidates I think 
people want to know the soul of who you are. And, and I think for me, always doing some really great stuff at, you know, let's, let's talk about brands we love, even if they're not about us, because yeah. you learn about us. You learn who we are by highlighting the people that we love. Mm -hmm. And I think that change in approach of me, 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 like let, yeah. let's talk about everybody saying how great, saying they, are. How great they are, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. It just became, it just became wallpaper, I think for mm -hmm. a lot of people. And I, I love the, you know, when, when all they said, um, you know, let's do something, let's do stuff differently. Let's start putting ourselves out there on what we're good at and what we're bad at, but in real things. So he started this curating stories process and, and I think you learn who we are and that's all I care about. I don't want to convince you to apply for us and it not be right for you. I want to find the people where this environment absolutely you know, helps them thrive. And this is, they're a part of our misfit gang. Yeah. So yeah, I think it's less about convincing everyone you're great and more mm -hmm. about showing them through the shop window. This is just who we are. And, yeah. and, and I think, um, I think we're trying to do that anyway, for sure. Amazing. Um, what, what do you think, uh, you know, in terms of the, the last few months and, and COVID, what do you think has potentially changed forever? Um, you know, for, for us and, and people teams. I hope a lot. Mm -hmm. Like I really hope a lot. There, was, there is some lot of positives, isn't there? I mean, it's a sad tale, but there's a lot of positives. <laughs> there, there is. There's a load of positives, and you know, I just think there's a lot of bad things on COVID. We all know that. We're all mm -hmm. human, and I don't need to talk about how tough this is. Yeah. But what I can choose to talk about is, it's like we've upped our game. We've absolutely had to up our game. Yeah. You know, when we were, we were just went into lockdown again, obviously. And my, you know, what I was saying to the guys is, is here we go again. Like we launched like 10 programs the last lockdown. The expectation is probably going to launch 15 this time. Yeah, it's and yeah. it's going, it's going up. So, so I hope the tangible things that will change is that I think there is a lot of hesitation for people teams to embrace tech. I hope that goes with yeah. this um, change. And, and I think it will. Yeah. Um, I also think, um, you know, I remember being at a conference years ago and hearing someone say, you know, automation, we should be fearful. It's what's going to cut jobs in half. And, and again, like I hope that part goes too, because automation has saved us to be able to do a lot of things. And it's not made us lose headcount. If anything, we're getting better jobs. And that for me is the big thing I want out of this change is we had a lot of shit jobs in hospitality we did and if we all look in the mirror we'd go some of these jobs that we've got people doing are just not acceptable and yeah. if we innovate and empower them we could pay them more they'd be more productive they'd be more happy and I think for me post-covid world is better jobs and um, we still have a work to do I'm not at all saying we've solved it but we're uh, we're looking through the the mirror and or looking at the mirror and saying is this a good job? And if it's not, let's make it a better job. Yeah. Uh, I hope that is overwhelmingly trans like transformational in our industry. Yeah. That's what I hope. And and then really just to kind of um, just to finish off, what you know, I, I think people will be looking at this thinking, wow, you know, they're this is streets ahead of potentially where we are. But what is next for Honest? What is the next? You know, what's your dream in terms of what you can achieve mm -hmm. over the next few years there? Um, oh, so much. I'm like, so much. I've just got like 20 ideas that just pop <laughs> in my head. Um, you know, I think, you know, I think people in our, there are people in our industry, you know, brew dog being one of them, that is a real living wage employer that I absolutely um, admire and inspire, aspire to be. So we're having a lot of conversations about how do we change the tide of where our current pay is and where we want it to be and I say turn the tide that I you know I think you have to be realistic to go yeah I'd love to be a real living wage tomorrow but we're 10 years in and 40 sites in how do we turn that titanic and I could bury my head in the sand and say never or we could really really try to be progressive and, and keep turning it and that's for me one of our biggest hurdles that we have to do um, is we need to pay excuse me we need to pay brackets that that we're proud of 
and that we feel really represent um, the worth of those roles. So we've got a way to work to, to go, mm-hmm. but my aspiration is that we can do that. Um, the second kind of thing I'd say is, is you know, we want to create this environment of, um, you know, what we call like the anti-chain infrastructure. Mm-hmm. We're a chain restaurant. We've got loads of sites. We're a chain restaurant. There's a lot of good things about a chain. Yeah. I come from... You know, McDonald's and Nando's, I'd be absolutely yeah. um, lying if I said, I don't think there's some great things about a chain. But there's some bad things too, like a lack of autonomy. You become a little bit more checklisty. You lose a lot of your entrepreneurial kind of spirit. And so we're trying in the next kind of two to three years, really working on this anti-chain infrastructure. So as a people team, that means you have to give a lot more control to your GMs, a whole lot more control. But this, the risks are still there. So how do we manage the risks? So we're on this journey of trying to create this environment where general, manager, general managers really can be entrepreneurs. And I think we do it brilliantly already in the operational space. I think it's a lot harder to do it in the people and finance space. And for me, I think the test of time of can we stay a founder-led entrepreneurial business is is, is hinged on the success of this anti-chain. So we're um, gonna impar- embark on that um, as soon as we're over kind of the manic of yeah. today and COVID. And, yeah, yeah um, <laughs> but I, I'm most excited about what that could, what that could be for yeah. general managers that I think are heartbeats of your business, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. amazing, wow. I, Thank you so much for your time. You're the you know, true inspiration to um, you know, to, to me and, and to the sector. So I really appreciate it. And you know, obviously wish you luck, you know, over over the next few few months. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you.